lawsuit filed against Facebook for role in a Rohingya Muslim genocide. So this was very interesting to me. On December 6th, a class action lawsuit was filed against Facebook, now rebranded as Meta, by Rohingya ethnic cleansing survivors. The cases, first filed in the United States and then in the United Kingdom, alleged Facebook's platform allowed an intensified hate speech against the Rohingya people in Myanmar. The survivors are demanding compensatory damages totaling over 100, 150 billion euros in addition to punitive damages. James Clayton of the North America Tech Report at BBC said that the lawsuits are particularly interesting because, quote, Facebook isn't denying that it could have done more. An internal investigation conducted by Facebook in 2018 revealed that the company failed to prevent the circulation of hate speech and incitement against, of violence against the Rohingya. In September 2021, an American judge ordered Facebook to release archived posts that portrayed Rohingyas as, in quote, subhuman terms, and posts that called for military action. Yet, Facebook resisted releasing these documents. According to Professor Josh Davis at the University of San Francisco School of Law, he says that it's hard to prove that Facebook's conduct harmed individual class members. Okay, I don't understand this, okay? So I'm just claiming ignorance. So if I say something that comes as insensitive or seems like I don't have don't have concern for people who were hurt, I'm just like, it's because I'm actually ignorant. I'm, I, I don't know, okay? But I mean, Facebook isn't a publisher, right? So like, it's not like you can, like, would you be able, like, if this was, if these, if like crimes against, humanity was conducted over phone calls you wouldn't be able to sue the phone company you know like you wouldn't be able to do that um so i don't understand like are we gonna if we're gonna hold facebook responsible for the content that is on their platform and they could be sued for this they're gonna go nuclear on everything that could be potentially harmful like they're gonna not like they, they, they like everything will be open to everything like i mean it's not like they're going to they have the resources to investigate look at all every single comment and figure out what's problematic and what's not problematic but and if they could be sued for it and they don't have the resources to have to go through every single comment and post they're just going to go nuclear and just remove everything that could be remotely controversial i mean i don't know well, like if yeah so um to this is very good this is a very important subject because this is the basis of some law in the united states and um so here here's an excerpt from um a article in the cn in cnn explaining this issue so quote the legal argument in the united states case may also be tricky it alleges that facebook should face product vi liability and negligence claims for failing to address a defects in its platform which plaintiffs claim contributed to the anti-Rohingya violence court documents show. In the US, Facebook would typically be protected from such liability by section 230 of the Communications Deficient De Decency Act, Communications De Decency Act. But the suit asks that the court asks the court to instead apply Burmese law, which it says does not provide such protections. Davis, this professor who's giving um, his analysis of this case, said but American courts are typically reluctant to take on such cases. He added that providing face proving Facebook's action has caused harm to the Rohingya people could be difficult. Um, I mean, but Facebook so, is not is an American company. How could you sue them within other countries' laws? Like you could um, either. And also, you know, perhaps yeah. I'm no lawyer. Perhaps it's a jurisdictional argument where they're saying that Facebook is an American company, but these crimes happened in this other country. So they're so attempting the only way, to have. But there is. Yeah, but you can't you can't. The only other way would be to use International Criminal Court, which United States is not a signatory to. So there's no other way you have to. Uh, unless no, you have this a, is this is this, this case is why, does have major obstacles of course this is why countries like india or they would want you to have 
if you want to be like, for example, operating in India, they were like, you have to have Facebook India or Twitter India. <laughs> so that we could go after, you can't just be an American company that is out of our reach. You, if you want to have, you need to have offices here and you need to have stakes here that we could go after if we don't like what you're doing. This is, but a bigger country get, get to do that. Um, I think yeah. that's the reason. Yeah, I can on. lay out some other issues. So the, um, the, uh, the, the American suit, which was the first to be filed, because again, there was the suit filed in the United States, which represents survivors living in the United States. And then there was a suit filed in the UK, and that represents survivors in every other part of the world except the United States. So the U.S. suit would have to clear numerous hurdles just to make it to summary judgment or trial, let alone secure a favorable ruling. For a suit to be certified as a class action by a judge, plaintiffs involved must have, must have experienced predominantly common issues. But given the nature of the crisis in Myanmar, the experiences of potential class members could vary widely. And quote, it's hard to imagine proof that would be common to the class that would establish Facebook's conduct harmed individual class members. And like I said, that they're trying to argue this on the basis of liability and negligence in terms of delivering a product. And But we do still have to clear that issue of the Section 230, which does protect publishers. Yeah, I don't... I just don't know if people understand what the consequences of these could be to everybody else. Right. And also, I don't think people understand the resources that it would take to like we are we ourselves are victims of bad judgment by social media, by Facebook, YouTube and Twitter, you know, taking us down without actually any human involvement um, into looking at what what is being taken down. Right. Or like I mean, I, we lost me and Susanna have lost our Twitter accounts like with, you know, so I mean, I mean this isn't even remotely comparable. No, what I'm no, what I'm saying is that we don't complain about no no you don't, you're missing my point. My point is that people want to hold Facebook accountable, but if you look at Facebook's interests, they would want to be able to if you think game theory wise, right? If they could have done something, if they had the resources if it made sense to like what do you think facebook benefits from being responsible for i don't know genocide obviously they would you know even I, they're completely for profit but profit every single motivation that they have is profit driven as people in the live chat are constantly pointing out yeah no 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 crap obviously it's a for profit company but it would be in their interest for them not to get accused of stuff like this. But I don't know people if people understand how difficult it is. Like the reason why I was bringing our, our social media taken down is like what I'm saying is that even when our social media is taken down, we don't we're not under this illusion that they they would be able like Facebook and YouTube and Twitter just has the manpower given that the amount of content that they're uh, that they are that is being produced every single second on this platform they would need like an army of like two planets to be able to manage this that's why they need AI right they can't there's no there's there's no there's not enough humans on this planet for them to be able to monitor all of this right um that's why we don't get angry. We get upset, but we don't really get angry that much because we we understand that that's a ridiculous expectation to have. So what I'm just saying is that I don't know if people understand what they're what they're asking for because what they're asking for is might not be something that these platforms could provide. And if if they if you force their hand into uh, by making it suitable for 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 what other people put on their platform, then they will have to do the nuclear option and just ban everything that could potentially be controversial. That's that's the all. The other but that's have to not, not what they're asking for. They're asking for damages. No, they, okay, but no, Susanna, listen, l listen. What to have? If they get damages, then Facebook will have to prevent damages like this ha for happening again. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, complicated by the fact open... that it's not it's not simply that, oh, they need a second planet to actually properly moderate their website. It's that the company has admitted itself in numerous internal documentations as well as public reports that they yes. knew it was bad, that they didn't intervene when they knew it was bad as bad as it was that they could have done more and that they failed to prevent the problem. This is blatant negligence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know maybe the details, but I would, I'm just asking if they can remove, like, obviously this is not the outcome that Facebook prefers. Right. Um, I just, I, I just think it's more complicated than people assume. But yeah, it's more complicated than I'm assuming as well. Like obviously, like I don't know all the details. I'm, I'm pretty sure a company as size of as, as big as Facebook is going to fuck up often, right? Yes. Just given the, I mean, I mean, how could they not? It's just so many operations happening at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So many things happening at the same time. Just by just by the law of l l large numbers, fuckers are going to happen, right? Um, and also, if you if yeah, go on. No, I mean, I I I do understand what you mean by talking about the larger issues of the consequences of um, opening yourself up to legal liability when faced with being a publisher and managing content I, I get what you're saying like there is a larger consequential argument to have i just feel like it's detracting from the issue at hand like having that conversation yeah. right now well it, it's not it's not detracting because if you want a solution to this you have to know what's possible mm -hmm. you know it's not detracting like i'm not dismissing the that's why I said um, I wanted to be careful because it seems like I'm being insensitive and dismissal of these people suffering. But I'm not because if you want a solution, you can't like go looking for things that are not possible. I mean, read Rebecca's comments here, for example. Rebecca is saying, Atheist Republic, I worked for AOL. Content management is really hard on an open platform. AOL had the terms of service and allowed them to yank idiots and security people right off the service. Well, AOL mm. actually had to have a congressional hearing about the issues that they had with their content about things that I can't even talk about on YouTube because it was so bad. Um, so yeah, it is. It's very complex. Um, Sickly Rarity is saying, I see what Armin is saying, but I don't think it will have the bad effects he thinks. I think it will cause Facebook to be more careful when moving into a, into territory and they don't have the translators to support that kind of a project. Um, I don't think we can actually speculate about what kind of effect it will have. And I actually think that it, we're kind of putting the cart before the horse because the um, this these two suits in the U.S. and the U.K. have a long ways to go before the, if if they if they can actually reach a trial, right? So there are consequences, but there is actually many many obstacles that have to be cleared before can even come to court and these issues be addressed, right? So there's a lot, so much that could change about these two lawsuits. Yeah. Anyways, soon there will be alternative. Never mind. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the need to talk about decentralized social media and the blockchain is rising within. <laughs> I no, it, yeah, I, no I, that totally I'm, is what's going to happen. No, yeah, but okay, so the, here's another problem I have. Okay, if if uh, if the solution to these would be these for us to get these centralized platforms with like management and stuff to like, if that's the solution we're going to, instead of finding another way, then we're going to be ill-equipped for a future where everything is on the goddamn blockchain and nothing is removable, right? So I'm just saying problem. like, right. So at that point, like I'm, I'm thinking like me, now we should practice finding a solution that would also be able to, that we also would be able to apply to a tomorrow that may come in 20 or 50 years that nothing is removable from, from, from web 3.0. Right. So you, you investing so many, so much legal resources on this, and then all of a sudden it goes nowhere. You know, you're now completely your weapons that you have, invested in are now useless because we're we're dealing with a new reality so just like think think long term um okay 
Oh, Secular Rarity is saying, yes, Susanna. I think you both talked about this really well. Well, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.